from you know, $25 a barrel back in 2002 to the new normal of $100 a barrel and more, which has been since 2011, 2012, and we're still there in 2014. Now, what's actually happening in the world of oil production to cause supply to flatten out and prices to rise dramatically? Well, the oil industry has been trying its level best to maintain increasing rates of production. You know, it, from 1998 to 2005, the industry in, invested $1.5 trillion in exploration and production, and that yielded almost 9 million barrels a day of new production. Okay, so uh, that's what we would expect to continue since 2005, but no, since 2005, the industry's invested $4 trillion, over twice as much, and that's yielded uh, about a third as much in terms of increasing production rates. So this is indication of declining returns on investment in exploration and production. Now, where oil production actually has grown in the last few years is in a single category, and that's what the industry calls unconventionals. Uh, that category includes uh, tar sands from Canada, uh, tight oil produced by hydrofracturing in places like the Bakken Formation in North Dakota, the Eagle Ford Formation in South Texas, uh, deep water and ultra deep water drilling as in the Gulf of Mexico. Now regular conventional oil production mostly onshore and mostly vertical wells in conventional uh, reservoirs, that hasn't grown. So what, we, what we've seen here is of the four trillion dollars that the industry has invested in the last eight years, only about 350 billion of that has gone into unconventionals. And that 350 billion in un, uh, inv investment in unconventionals has yielded almost all of the actual increase, paltry as it has been, in world oil production. The over three trillion, three and a half trillion dollars that the in industry has invested in conventional oil production has yielded flat to declining production. So th the industry has invested three and a half trillion dollars in producing zero new net oil production from conventional sources. So it's all about unconventionals now. The, the industry is turning away from investment in conventional oil because there's not that much more to be found and produced in that category and turning toward unconventionals. But as the price goes up to justify production from marginal sources, this has an economic impact. We've seen over the past few years that oil prices at $100 a barrel and higher are a break on economic expansion. So this is an example of the kinds of limits to growth that we are already seeing and will increasingly see as time goes on. But the industry, the oil industry, actually needs even higher prices than $100 a barrel to justify going after the last worst prospects. For example, Arctic oil. There's been a lot of talk in recent years about how, well, with the, with the North Polar ice cap melting, this opens up the opportunity for drilling in Arctic waters, in deep water and ultra deep water, to produce oil and, and natural gas that are, that are present there. But the industry's efforts so far, especially Shell, have been thwarted by the high costs and risks of operating in this very forbidding environment. So Shell has largely pulled out of its Arctic operations 
and nobody else really wants to go there until oil prices go higher. It's just not cost effective. The actual costs of oil exploration and production are rising at about 11% per year for the industry. But the market won't bear a higher price. As the, higher, as the price of oil nudges higher, what happens? Consumers in North America and Europe and Japan pull back on consumption. The Chinese are continuing to increase their consumption of oil, but North Americans, not so much. In the U.S., we're seeing uh, declining vehicle miles traveled. And we really haven't seen this before. Typically, in the U.S., every year, there's uh, historically, uh, there are more vehicles on the road and people are driving further, they live further from where they, they, uh, from where they uh, work or shop and they make longer trips. But no, that's not happening anymore. Young people are deciding not to own cars. Uh, so U.S. oil consumption has been flatlined or in some years declining in these recent years as oil prices have, have risen. And so the market is not supporting increasing oil prices. So therefore, the industry, which needs higher oil prices, is actually pulling back on investment in upstream projects, exploration and new production prospects. And this is a very new phenomenon. This has just been happening in the last few months. So what this means is, almost certainly, in the next year or two, we will start to see production declines in the category of conventional oil. So are the unconventionals going to be able to make up for those declines which may begin to become significant over the next four or five years. Well, that's, that's really a, a big question because, again, oil is, is key to the economy itself. The, uh, the majors, the, the Exxons, Shell, Chevron, have been investing more and more and their production has actually been declining. If you look at the top 10 major oil companies, their, their total production has declined by about 25% in the last 10 years. So it's not up to the majors anymore. Most of the uh, drilling for unconventionals in the form of tar sands has not been happening among the majors. It's smaller companies that have been willing to take on more risk and more debt in order to go after these these smaller and riskier deposits. But the claims that are being made for unconventional oil and also for a related resource, shale gas, are extraordinary. We've heard in just the last few years that the U.S. has a hundred years and it's sometimes even said 200 years of cheap natural gas as a result of the advent of hydrofracturing. That the U.S. is becoming energy independent, that the U.S. is becoming the world's foremost oil producer again, as it was many, several decades ago, and that the expansion of the tar sands production in Canada can go on uh, almost indefinitely because the resource base is so large. So the claims are we no longer have anything to worry about in terms of fossil fuel supply. These are extraordinary claims given what I've just been telling you about what's happening, actually happening in the oil industry and the financials of the oil industry. So are these claims true? <clears throat> well, there are very extensive resources in terms of shale gas 
and tight oil in North America and elsewhere around the world. Uh, but are they going to, are these resources going to support those, those claims? Well, we've decided to do some research on that subject at, at, within my organization, Post Carbon Institute. We've, we determined, first of all, that the claims that are being made rest on some assumptions. Those assumptions are that there's relative uniformity among the various plays or geological formations that are likely to produce shale gas and tight oil, that there's relative uniformity among the plays and also within the plays. So within these relatively large geographic areas, you'll be able to drill almost anywhere and have relatively good success in terms of production and profit potential. Well, <clears throat> We, we decided to test these assumptions. We uh, bought the rights to drilling data on over 60,000 currently producing shale oil, shale gas and tight oil wells uh, in the United States. Uh, the analysis was uh, done by one of our fellows, David Hughes, who's a British Columbian, uh, former chief geoscientist for the Canadian Geological Survey. We looked at the location of each well, the initial production rate of each well, and then followed the production rate of each well over time. What we found is that there's high variability between, in terms of resource quality, between these plays and also within plays. So that, uh, for example, in the Barnett shale gas play in Texas, which is uh, focused right around the city of Fort Worth, Texas, there's only a small area where initial production rates are high enough to justify the investment in drilling. That's not to say the only wells that have been drilled are in the, this core, small core area, but the wells outside that core area have not been profitable. So the industry, and I've, I've attended industry uh, presentations on uh, shale gas and, and tight oil. The industry representatives tend to say, well, look, here's the proof. The proof is in the production. Look at what's happening with this well and this well and this well. And what they're typically showing is results from the first and best wells drilled. And the assumption, again, is that uh, as companies move away from these core areas, they're going to get the same results. The data does not support that. Another thing we found is that uh, not only are initial production rates outside the core areas much lower, but decline rates are even higher. Even within the core areas, production tends to fall pretty rapidly from shale gas and tight oil uh, formations. Why? Well, you know, it's, it's partly, well, it's, it's, real, it's actually entirely a matter of the resource that we're talking about. Uh, we're, these are, as, as the terms indicate, tight formations. So there's very little permeability. The resource is there. Geologists call them source rocks. Um, typically, in the uh, biological material, uh, algae, plankton, that was deposited tens of millions of years ago, uh, was, was cooked within the rocks by, uh, by immense pressure and, and temperature and typically has migrated from uh, often shale rocks into more porous rocks that are capped by an, an, uh, an impervious cap rock. This is a conventional oil reservoir. Uh, 